Fitting in has never been easy for me until I started my senior project at the Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice. My name is Charisma Strawn and I've devoted over 100 hours to doing my senior project at the center. Originally, the center wasn't my first choice. I've been eyeballing the center since March of my junior year, but their confusing website had put me off from them. When I chose a different organization, something didn't feel right. I felt out of place and that I didn't belong. I don't necessarily know why I felt that way, something just didn't feel right. One of my main goals for my senior project was to feel like I was actually doing something to help my community, not just cleaning and organizing shelves. This is when I decided I needed to switch organizations and join the Albuquerque Center for Peace and Justice. As soon as I stepped foot into the center, conversations with everyone were already flowing. I met my mentors, Cheyenne and Susie, who are now some of my favorite people. I also began to learn more about the center and what we stand for. We work to teach nonviolent resolution while also providing space for individuals or other organizations to use for whatever they may need it for. We've made providing a safe space for people our main focus for the organization over the past year. I started off by myself, then was later joined by my best friend Ainsley. When working by myself, I had spent time organizing and making signs around the center, which as I said earlier, was the complete opposite of what I wanted to do. I just felt like I was doing busy work and it wasn't until Ainsley came that I felt like the work I was doing had some sort of value. It added more value because we were able to have a conversation with our mentors when she joined about what kind of work we wanted to do. We created our hashtag Peace Rocks, which originally was just a simple idea of painting rocks and giving them to people who you care about. We ended up finding a way to incorporate our rocks in almost everything we do now. If there are volunteer potlucks, we'll make rocks for volunteers to take. When we go to John Adams for our restorative justice circles, we occasionally have the kids paint rocks. These rocks are a great conversation starter, an amazing way to show someone you're thinking of them. Even though Ainsley and I have the same senior project, the work we do varies. Our projects may cross paths, but we've had our own experiences with the center. Susie Cheyenne and I go to John Adams Middle School to meet freshmen from West Mesa for resortive justice circles. In order for me to do this, I had to do a lot of studying on how to be a mediator. It took me a while to actually go do work in the school, but as soon as I got there and we were doing stuff like the rocks or the card games with them, I realized that I was doing exactly what I wanted to do with my senior project. I felt like I was finally doing something important. Talking with these kids once a week has helped me realize what I wanted to do in my future, and that's to help others with their mental health issues. I'm going to tell a story about a student that I grew close to, but I won't be using any names or photos of the rocks the kids did or what they look like for privacy reasons. The one conversation that left the biggest impact on me was from this boy who obviously wanted no part in our after school program. I remember watching him just on his phone while everyone else was engaging. The point in our circles is to hear everyone's voices, so I switched the game that we were playing up to hopefully hear something out of him. I had two decks of feelings and needs cards, and I told the kids that I was going to hold up a feelings card, and whoever wanted to could tell me about a time they felt like that. The first card I pulled was the emotion lonely, and when I held it up, the group went completely silent. Besides the boy who had not been talking the whole time, I saw something in his eyes and that he wanted to speak up. He brought up how things were with his mom and even more intensely his assault that he went through. This led all the other kids to tell their personal stories as well. At that moment, I realized that even if it is only a group of 10 to 15 kids, I'm still creating a safe space for kids to come and completely be comfortable with themselves, which has always been one of my goals ever since I became an older sibling. It started off with wanting to create a safe space for my little sister for when she got older because that was something I felt I lacked. It eventually became that I wanted to do this for more than just my sister. I see myself in a lot of the kids I speak to. A lot of the things they're going through, I've also been through. I always think about if I would have had a place to come and just be 100% honest about my situation and the things I was going through, I probably would have been a less bitter person. These kids would make me smile on days I didn't think I could. Every single one of their stories will always stick with me. This sort of breakthrough had inspired me to start coming up with event ideas to bring more youth to the center. Ainsley and I were able to plan an event called Hashtag Peace Rocks. During this time, Ainsley and I were both taking a design one class. We were able to come up with different abstract ideas for the guests to do, inspired by what we were learning in our CNM class. It was a fun night for kids 14 to 18 to enjoy art and some music. Overall, volunteering at the center has taught me patience and perseverance. It's brought me a lot of happiness, especially being able to do it with Ainsley. 
I've made a close connection with both my mentors, and I hope to spread restorative justice everywhere I go. I'll miss the long conversations with Susie, the different art pieces we have on display, and the kiddos who helped me realize I have a purpose.